The book of Proverbs, chapter 29, verse 18. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. I'm reading a second scripture. Psalm, the book of Psalm. Psalm 20, verse 4. Psalm 20, verse 4. May he give you the desires of your heart and make your plans succeed. May he give you the desires of your heart and make your plans. That word plans, you can actually put it goals and make your goals succeed and make your plans succeed. Father, we thank you because the entrance of your word given light. I pray this moment that you bless this word, everyone under the sound of my voice, anoint their lips to, anoint their ears to hear this word, anoint my lips to speak your word as an oracle of God, glorify your name through your word, I take authority over every spirit of destruction, Satan I bind you in the name of Jesus, I banish you to the pit of hell, Father let your name be glorified, give us insight into your word, use your word to change our lives, use your word to draw us closer to you. Use your word to inspire us and to develop our faith in you. We thank you because it is done. Have your way, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody says amen. amen. I want to speak this morning on the art of goal setting. The art of goal setting. Goal setting is, a, is an art. But it's also something, unfortunately, that many believers don't practice. There are many of us as believers, we often think that God will come to plan our lives for us. We often think that God will set goals for us and achieve those goals. There are many things that God wants us or looks forward for us to do, but we sit back and wait for God to do. Listen, if you are going to go far in life, there are principles that we must observe and I believe in prayer I believe in fasting and I do prayer and I do fast but listen there are things that is not a, a thing that of prayer or fasting prayer and fasting has its place but something like goal setting has its place something like planning has its place if you don't know how to plan if you don't know how to set goals in life you will never accomplish great things for God you will never go far in life why because it takes planning to succeed there is a saying that he who plans to fail who, who fails to plan plans to fail when you fail to plan you are planning to fail when you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. Now, when you set goals, when you set goal to accomplish something, the chances are that you are going to accomplish or reach those goals. But when you set no goal, when you have no goal, guess what? You will uh, you will reach zero goal. You will not reach those goals because there's no goal to reach in the first place. So I want to challenge and encourage us to begin to set goals in life. And there are different kind of goals. There are spiritual goals. You can set a goal to, you know, get closer to God this year. You can set a goal to get more into the word of God. You can set a goal to spend more time in prayer. You can set a goal, you know, to grow spiritually, to spend more time, you know, controlling your, your lips. So that especially if you are somebody that gossips a lot and, you know, uses words in such a way that it brings negative influence on you. You can, there are also career goals. You can set career goals. You can set goals to move forward from where you are career-wise or business-wise. You can set goals for your business. You can set goals for your health. If you are if you are having health challenges, you can set goals to say, you know, this year I'm going to do better. I'm going to exercise more. I'm going to eat better. There are goals that you set that impact your life, that affect you positively. But when you fail to set goals, when you don't set goals, you know, you don't reach those goals because there's nothing to reach. Uh, God gave me the privilege to discover the principles I'm sharing with you today when I was 24 going to 25. I was in Bible school then, I think about to finish it, and I, I read a book of a man who set a goal, 50 year goal, and there were every detail of those goals. There are some things that were even very minor, like even up to like the kind of places he wanted to travel and things he wanted to, things he wanted to accomplish. That inspired me. 
And I began to think long time, began to set long time goals. And that, I will say, has really helped me in life. I don't believe I will be where I am today if I didn't come ac across those principles and didn't begin to apply it in my life. Even today, there are things you hear me say today, which is a goal that I'm setting, a plan that I'm making for the future. The only way you can get to a goal or a plan you make is if you set them. If you don't set a goal, if you don't make plans, you will never reach them. So goal setting is an art. An art is something you need to do and keep doing. You get better at it by doing it. When you talk about singing, singing is an art. That is why you, they say practice makes perfect. The more you keep doing it, the more you get better at it. So goal setting is an art. And you need to begin to, you need to do it and keep doing it to keep, keep getting better at it. So I want to share with you some of the things that will help you to get better in goal setting. The scripture we read in Proverbs 29, 18, it says, where there is no vision, the people perish. But do you know that vision takes goal setting to achieve them? It's one thing to have vision, but if there is no goal, if you don't set a goal, you can never achieve vision. So it takes goal setting to achieve a vision. Goal setting is a process. It's not an event. You don't just hit it and say, okay, I've arrived. No, you set it's a process that you keep working on and keep working on. There are long-term goals and there are short-term goals. I love using the ladder as an example. If I'm down here and I want to climb up to the roof or to the top, I bring a ladder and I put the ladder from down to the to, uh, that uh, that takes me to the top. The ladder is the goals and the plans that you set. The ladder is the one that you put down, and the long-term goals are the is the ladder that you put that goes from down to the top. That is the long-term goals. We need to set long-term goals. What are your long-term goals as we enter year 2023? At the beginning of every year, people set goals, and some of us don't, but what are your long-term goals? We need to think strategically. We need to think long-term. The problem with most people is that their thinking is only just for now. What I will eat now. What I will do now. They are not thinking far. You need to begin to see far. God is a strategic God. God always thinks far. He plans far. God plans for thousands of years ahead. When he was calling Abraham, his goal and plan for Abraham was long-term plan. He was thinking thousands of years ahead. When he would raise a nation through Abraham and through that nation, Jesus Jesus, the Messiah, we come. So God is always thinking long term. And the problem why we can't understand the ways of God is because while God is busy thinking long term, we are busy thinking just for now. Oh God, I don't have money in my pocket, so you must not, you must have abandoned me because you are, you are not answering my prayers. But God is thinking long term, trying to use what you are going through to prepare you for the things he has ahead for you. So the long term goal are the goals and the things is the ladder that you put from down that takes you to the top of life, to the top of wherever you want to get to. I challenge you, set long-term goals. Set goals. How old are you now? 22, right? Set what, if I ask you now, what are your long-term goals? What are your goals for the next 50 years? At your age, set a goal for the next 50 years. Where do you want to be 50 years from now? 25 years from now. Let's bring it to 25 years. Where do you want to be 25 years from now when you will be 52 or 50 what? 50, 50 what would, would that be? 47 or so, when you'll be 47. Where will you be? What, what do you want to accomplish? When you set long-term goals, there are things you want to accomplish when you get to that point. I mean, it just seems like yesterday when I was 24, 25, it seems like yesterday. And I set a 25-year goal. I said 25 years from now, I want to be this, I want to be this, I want to get to this point in life. And by the grace of God, I've reached many of those goals. And there are some I'm still working on. And there are God, the God even will throw in some things along the way. Because at that time, it was never in my agenda to join the U.S. military. I was not even in the U.S. at that time. But there are things God will also throw in along the way, which is great. But then you have to say that you have to dream big. There is a saying that when you aim for the stars, for the stars, you will reach them. Now, if you aim for the stars in the sky, 
Even if you don't reach them, you are going to go way beyond where you are at the moment. Set goals for 25 years, 20 years, 15 years, 5 years. 5 years from now, where do you want to be? What do you want to be doing? The long term goal, let's limit it to 5 years. 5 years from now, what are your goals? What are your plans? What do you want to achieve? What do you want to accomplish? Where do you want to be? Because those goals, the long term goals is now going to be the thing that help you in the short term goals. So, back to the ladder. When you have the ladder that you have put from the ground to the top, how do you get to the top? By climbing the rungs of the ladder, one rung at a time. As you begin to climb one rung at a time, before you know it, you are going up and going up. Before you know it, you will be at the top. You will get to your destination, which is the top of the ladder. The short-term goals are the rungs on the ladder. Those you do on a daily basis, those little, little things that you do, they may not make sense. They may not even be comfortable sometimes. For instance, you want to graduate in the next four years to have your first degree. You enroll in school. Now, that is your long-term goal. The next four years, I want to have my first degree. Or the next four years, I want to have my PhD. And then you enroll in, in college or in university in whichever school, and you begin to work on it. You write your assignment, you write your papers, you attend lectures, all of those are the short-term goals. Those are the things that you do on a daily basis. Sometimes you don't feel like doing it, but you know you need to do it for you to be able to meet up with the long-term goals. So the short-term goals are those things you do on a daily basis to be able to help you to reach the long-term goal. But you need to have a long-term goal. What are your long-term goals? Five years from now, ten years from now, what do you want to accomplish? What do you want to become? Where do you want to be? When you and I challenge you, write those things down. They say that there is a saying that the shortest pencil is longer than the longest memory. Why you may not write it now while I'm preaching? When you get home, take time to pray, take time to meditate, take time to think about your life, about your plans, about your future. Think long term. Ten years from now. What do I want to be doing? Where do I want to be? What do I want to accomplish? 15 years from now, 5 years from now, then when you do that, break them down to short-term goals. Because the short-term goals are the ones that will help you to get there. So I want to share with you seven principles to goal setting. The principles that will help you to set goals that will make sense. Number one, start with a faith-filled determination to succeed. When you are setting a goal, you need to have faith that you will succeed in your goals. You need to have faith that your plans and your goals will succeed. That is always the starting point. Start with a faith-filled determination to succeed. In other words, Jesus says, to him that believes, all things are possible. When you believe you will succeed, you will succeed. But when you believe you will fail, guess what? You will fail. Because our faith is like a magnet. You attract whatever it is you believe. The power of faith and power of believing will make anything happen that you want to happen. If you want success to happen, it will happen by the power of faith. If you want failure to happen, it will unfortunately happen because your faith is like a magnet that will magnet anything that you dwell on. So you need to understand that you have your desire to succeed. You have to determine that you want to succeed. You have to have a faith-filled determination that you will succeed in life. And I tell you that is a starting point because when I look back to where I was, where I'm coming from, the only reason why I am here today is because there was a point in my life when I look around me, even in ministry, everyone that I knew that was in ministry, they were nothing but failures. I wouldn't say failure. I wouldn't use the word failure because we may look at them as failures, but God may still look at them. They have done great things. But you see, there are not some people you look to and want to go into ministry because there was so much poverty, there was so much about nothing, it's like emptiness of life. Of course, they are doing the little, they could at their stage, at their level. But I said to myself, I want to be a I want to do ministry when I when God called me, but I don't want to be the empty kind of minister. I don't want to be the poor kind of minister that people look at you and they don't want to serve God. People look at you, they don't want to be in ministry. And from then I made up my mind. There was a faithful determination.
determination. I said to myself, I must succeed in life. I must succeed in ministry. I must pay the price. I refuse to be poor. I refuse to fail. I refuse to be associated with lack and poverty and failure when people talk about ministers or ministry. And that became the driving force. That was the first thing. That was the starting point. So I challenge you today, especially if you are listening to this message and you are young, I challenge you, it doesn't matter what your family looks like. If everybody in your family has failed, that is not you. You can come up and become the different person. You can make up your mind. Determine in your heart that you will succeed. You must succeed. Determine that you will not be a failure in life. You will not be like everybody around you that has failed. Make up your mind. Determine. That is the starting point before you begin to set any goal determine that you will succeed and when you start there i'm telling you you will begin to become a success because the word of god says jesus himself says to him that believes all things are possible which means if you believe that you will succeed you will succeed but if you believe that you will fail unfortunately you will fail in life so start with the faith filled determination to succeed. Number two, get the fact about the goal that you are setting. If you are setting a goal or you are making a plan, get the fact, do some research, find out what it is, what is needed, what it is that you need to do. Find out, research, and thank God for Google these days. Google information. Find out. I mean, I can't tell you how much information that I've had to... If, if there is something I want to get into, the first most important thing I do is to research, is to investigate, is to write, do whatever due diligence because the information, the quality of information you have is going to be key to the success of any venture you are trying to pursue. When I first dreaming about launching a TV network, man, I began to read and study about broadcasting, about television broadcasting network. Every kind of material. In fact, I I, I registered with T tomorrow. I registered with different TV um, TV um, what do you call it organizations. Uh, I'm trying to remember the name now. You know all these trade organizations. I register with them. They still tomorrow. They send me their articles. The, the latest trend in the broadcast industry. The latest trend in fact their conferences. All of those. Why? Because I need to be abreast. I need to stay informed. I need to know what's happening in the broadcast industry because I have a dream. And this is I'm telling you from way back 15, 20 years ago. Even when I was in Nigeria, I read and research about broadcasting, how to start a TV network, how to run it, how to go about it. I did all of that. Why? Because it is a dream that I have. It's a goal that I've set. And I knew that I needed to have the fact. So get the fact about the goals that you are trying to set. Get the fact about the, uh, the, the project that you are trying to, to, to begin because the information you have is going to be the most important asset to making those goals happen. Number three, develop a step-by-step -step plan of action for your goals. It's not just enough to have a goal. How do you want to achieve that goal? Develop, put in writing a step-by-step -step approach, a step-by-step -step plan of how you want to reach your goals. It's not just enough to say, I want to launch a TV network. I'm believing God to have a TV network. What are the steps? How do you go about it? If you don't have know how to go about it, then research, study, find out, ask questions, and then put it in writing. Don't just think about it. Oh, don't say, okay, I'll remember. No, the shortest pencil is longer than the longest memory. Put it in writing. Write down your plans. Discover what it is you need to do. Your step-by-step -step plans of action to reach your goal. Because what you have written down is what is going to be like the roadmap. It's like the guide. When you are traveling to a place you don't know, you know, in the olden days, they will need a map, right? You need a map, and you have to follow the map. Today, thank God, we have we have a map quest, we have Google map, we have all of those technologies. So you now need to depend on that technology. 
and it says turn right to turn right, turn left to turn right, because you have already it, it has already you have already put down the destination where you're going. You've already told it your plans, your goal to get there, and it gives you if you print it out, you will see it's a step by step direction. When you get to social street, turn left. When you go to this place, what's that? That is giving you a step-by-step -step direction to get to where you're going. So, when you have a goal and you are pursuing that goal and you have a plan to reach your destination, you need to develop a step-by-step -step plan of action to get to your goals. Number four, write down your power plans and your what-if plans. And that does not mean that you don't have faith. Write down your power plans, your goals, how you reach them. Write it down by then. Write down your what if plans. So what if your plan did not work out? What if what you are planning to do, what if because life does happen, chances are that things will not work out exactly as you planned it. So while you write out your step-by-step -step plans, also have a backup, have a what-if plans in case the plan didn't work out as, as you planned, as you hope. There are times when things will not work out. I'm, I'm telling you from experience. There are times when you do the best you can plan in planning in paper. When it gets to execution, somehow things doesn't work out. Life does happen. And that will happen to your goals. That will happen to your plans. But when it happens, what is your what if plans? What are your what if plans? Write them down as well because that will guide you. That will help you. That may be what you have to fall back to. That may be the plan you will have to resort to in case the original plan didn't work out. So write down your power plans and your what if plans. Number five, revise your plan as your goals or circumstances change. Revise your plan as your goals and your circumstances change. In other words, you need to be flexible. If you are setting a goal and making plans, you need to be, the key word is flexibility. The laws of the Medes and Pesha is a law written in stone. It can't be changed. If they make that law, even if somebody is going to be killed, it doesn't matter. They can't change it. You see, when Daniel was to be thrown in the, in the lion's den, the king at the time was his friend. He loved Daniel. But they had tricked him to sign a law. And that law was that nobody would pray to any other God except, except to, you know, to, to the king, to, to their God for 30 days because they were trying to catch Daniel. That was the only way they know to. The king didn't know it was about Daniel. And he said, okay, he just or whatever, he just signed it. The moment he signed it to law, it was too late. Even he couldn't change it. By the time he discovered it was about Daniel, and Daniel was now caught in the heart. He was so bitter, he couldn't sleep. But even though he was a king, he couldn't change it. Because it's a law, he's already signed. That's the laws of the ladies and patients. They can't, once it is signed into law, that's it. Even if somebody's going to be killed, it doesn't matter. That was why the early morning, the next morning, he came very early and came to check on Daniel. He said, Daniel, are you there? Did your God, whom you serve, was he able to deliver you? And God, Daniel said to him, the God whom I serve, he was able to deliver me. He sent his angel and they shut the mouth of the lion. He was so happy because even though he couldn't do anything about it, God did something about it. And then he commanded and have those people that plotted to be thrown in there. So in other words, God said to the animals, the lions, don't worry, I have meal for you, but not this one. Don't touch him. What am I saying? When the, 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 the people made that plan and they signed it into law, that was it. No more going back. Your plans and your goals should not be the laws of medicine and patient. You shouldn't be rigid. You have to be able to revise your plans as your circumstances change, as the event changes. If there is need to change, make changes. If there is need to adjust, make adjustments. Don't say, oh, I've made my plans. Oh, I've made my, set my goals. That's how it's going to be. Things will change. Circumstances, it could be government policies. It could be your health, your family. Things will happen that will make you to change. So revise your plans as your goals and your circumstances change. And be flexible enough to change. Let me give you one of the examples I've talked about this uh, you know, over and over again. As we launched the app in October of 2022, I mean our TV network app, my goal was by end of the year of December, we will have 
10,000 downloads of the app. And I was, we were working on it. I believed God for it. And that goal was, I came short of that goal. By the end of the year, we came close to 2,000 downloads, which is good. I mean, there are some apps out there that has not had up to 100 downloads in years. So in three months, we had close to 2,000 downloads. That was a good one. We made success and progress, but it, it fell short of the goal. So what do I do? I readjusted. Said, okay, you know what? We need maybe six more months. Now, that is, you are supposed to be able to be realistic to yourself. You set a goal by the end of this month, I'm going to do this. By the end of this year, I'm going to do this. And you discover by midway or towards the end, you have not reached that goal. Feel free to adjust, make adjustment because that is part of the process. Revise your plans and as your goal and circumstances change. Number six, surround yourself with wise people. In other words, show me your friends and I will show you who you are or who you will become. Who you surround yourself with is going to be the difference between your success or your failure. Some people have the wrong peer pressures, the wrong friends, people who mislead them, who will tell them what they want to hear. And that affects their progress, their success, and their growth. But we need to be wise. We need to surround ourselves with wise people. People who can tell you the truth. People who can motivate you, challenge you. People who will make you move forward in life. Not people who will tell you what you want to hear. Anyone that makes you feel comfortable and tells you what you want to hear all the time, they are not going to help you long term. Because there are times when we need to hear the truth, to hear what may not be comfortable for us, that will help us to grow. So, surround yourself with wise people. The Bible says in the midst of uh, wise counsels, you know, there is safety. When you have wise people around you, sometimes you want to make the wrong choice or wrong decisions and their counsel helps you makes you change your mind and makes you be on the right path. But when you have wrong friends, people who are not wise, it will be difficult for you to make anything great, meaningful out of your life. So revise, um, surround yourself with wise people. Number seven, stay at it. Don't give up on your goals. Stay at it and don't give up on your goals. And this is, in other, in other words, this is to say that you need to be persistent. And you all know that this is it's like my trademark. The moment you talk about persistence or not giving up, that's like my trademark. So when you set a goal, when you have a plan, when you dream to accomplish something, there will be obstacles. There will be challenges. There will be setbacks. There will be things that make it, try to make it impossible for you to reach your goals. What do you do when your goals fall short? What do you do when things did not work out as plans? What do you do when you have planned, you have great plans and something crashes it? Don't give up. Stay on your goals. Stay on it. Don't surrender. Don't throw in the towel. If you throw in the towel, you will not reach your dreams. You will not reach your goals. You will not go far in life if you always give up whenever opposition challenges or position persecution comes. So learn to stay at it and don't give up on your goals. Don't give up on yourself. Don't give up on your goals. Don't give up on your dreams. Believe God that they will come to pass. Do you know how many times I've carried many dreams that seem to be impossible? And I keep using the TV network because it's one of those dreams that I, I, I almost gave up. There were times when it feels like giving up. But when I think about it, I know that with God, all things are possible. And of course, I preach the message of persistence all the time. So I just kept holding on to that. It took over 20 years. But you see, when you refuse to throw in the towel, the dreams and the goals you are believing and working on, they will come to pass. At some point, they will come to pass. And I pray for you, I prophesy over you that every dream and every goal that you're carrying, you're pursuing in 2023, God will make them happen. God will bring them to pass in the name of Jesus. Amen. As I begin to round up, I want to just give you a um, few more points, a few more things on how to set effective goals. Number one, your goals should be strategic. In other words, your goals should have, uh, should be long, you should always learn to think long term. Strategic means you are 
thinking long, you are planning ahead. It's not just about now. So your goals has to be strategic. Learn to set long-term goals. Number two, your goals should be measurable. It's something you can measure. When it succeeds, you, you need to know. People need to be able to know that you succeeded in reaching that goal. When you didn't succeed, you should be able to know that, yeah, I miss it and I have to keep working on it. So your goals should be measurable. For instance, when I say we are going to download, uh, have 10,000 downloads within the next six months, that is a measurable goal. At the end of the six months, I'm able to know, did we have 10,000 downloads? If we have maybe 2,000 downloads of the app, of the TV network app, oh, praise God, we've made progress, but we're not there yet. Then we are just once again, but it has to be measurable so that you know when you are succeeding at it, at it or when you are not. Number three, your goals should be achievable. Don't set goals that even you know that the, even though I said all things, no, I didn't say, even though Jesus says all things are possible to him that believes, you see? But don't set a goal that is not achievable. Don't say by tomorrow morning I'm going to have an aircraft. <laughs> oh, by tomorrow morning I'm going to launch a, a an airline. It may happen, but it won't be tomorrow morning. So you have to be realistic to yourself. You have to set a goal that is achievable, that you can look at the timeline and know that is achievable. So set goals that are achievable. Number four, set goals that are relevant. Your goal has to be relevant. It has to be relevant to yourself, to your family, to your generation, to the body of Christ, to the kingdom of God. Don't just set goals for the sake of setting goals. Let your goals be something, goals that will be relevant um, to humanity. Number five, finally, set goals that have timing or your goals should have timing. You see, when you set goals and there's no time to wait, <laughs> that's just an excuse not to have those goals executed. Because you said someday I'm going to do this. When is someday? Any day is someday. Someday I'm going to go to school. Someday I'm going to get my degree. Someday. Ten years later. Oh, someday we ask you, how far will that degree? Oh, no. You see, someday I'm going to. No, you need to set a timing. By the end of this year, I want to get admission. By the end of Next year, I want to graduate. By the end of this time, you need to set, let there be a time. Your goal has to have timing. So that time will help you. It will propel you. It will compel you. It will make you to begin to work on it. Because if you don't put any time, you will think you have forever. And you will do nothing about it. But when you set a time, and you know that you are, you are working on a timeline, that will propel you to begin to work on it. And before you know it, the moment you get working on it, before you know it, those dreams will begin to manifest. I want to encourage us. I want to encourage you. Let's get into the art of goal setting. Set goals in 2023. When you get home, this is your homework. When you get home, look at your life prayerfully. Plan and ask God, what do you want me to do? What it is that I want to do, I want to accomplish this year. Set the goals. Follow the principles that I've outlined here. Write them down. And then pray. Commit them to God. Because when you set those goals, God is the one that will help you reach those goals. But you have to set them. You have to commit it to, to him. And you have to believe that he's going to help you to reach those goals. I can't tell you how many of the goals. And they are, by the way, there are many goals that may not you may not reach tomorrow morning. You may think, oh, by tomorrow morning I'll be there. You may not. And it's part of the process. When you don't reach those goals, keep setting, keep readjusting, keep working on it. If you keep working on goals that you set, you will reach those goals. You will see them. You will someday see them manifest. You will someday see them come to pass. Because perspire, they are not the same. I use it a lot in my books. Perspire for that which you desire. And until you acquire it, don't retire. Perspire for that which you desire. And until you acquire it, don't retire. Stand on your feet. And I wanted to ask God now, Father, 
help me to pursue every dream, every goal. If there are goals you have set for 2023, if there are goals you have set for life, and if you are watching this and those of you who are here, if you are young, I want to challenge you to begin to look at your life and think about your life and set long-term goals. Set goals of 5, 10, 15, 25 years. What do you want to do? Where do you want to be 25 years from now? 20 years from now? years from now. Those of us who are maybe in our 60s, if you are here, you are 60s. Set goals. Where do I want to be 10 years from now? If Christ starts 15 years from now, and begin to believe God to help you reach those goals, whatever those goals may be. Father, I thank you for this word. I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice. Lord, I pray that you bless everyone this moment. Help us to reach every goal that we might have, we might have set for our lives. Everyone that has a goal, a dream, that has a plan for their lives, the things they want to accomplish, I pray, oh God, that you will help them. Help us to achieve every goal that we have set for year 2023. Help us to achieve every goal that we have set for our lives. Every satanic opposition, every satanic obstacle that is hindering, that may want to hinder us from reaching our goals, I cancel them in the name of Jesus. I declare oh God that heaven will back our goals. Heaven will back our plans. Everyone that has made a goal, that has set a goal or a plan for things they want to achieve this year, I release the supernatural enablement. I release supernatural empowerment that they will that you will back them up, oh God. That they will be able to execute those goals. That we will execute every dream, every plan that we have. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy and I declare that every dream and every goal and every plan of our heart in for year 2023 and for life, you will make them happen for us. You will bring it to pass, oh God. For with you all things are possible. I bless your people right now. I declare that nobody that has listened to this message will be a failure in life. I bless your people and I declare that everyone that needs wisdom, that they need to be able to plan or execute or execute their goals or their plans. Father, help your people. Bless them with wisdom. Bless them with understanding. Bless us with counsel. The right counsel from the right people. Help us to surround ourselves with wise people around us. That Lord will help us to reach God and dreams and the plans that we have set in our heart and we thank you for it. I bless this message and as we go back and try to even uh, think about it and plan, help us, give us the wisdom we need to make plans and that those plans and goals that we set will succeed. We give you thanks because it is so. I bless your people. As we go, let your presence go with us. Let your peace go with us. As we usher, we are ushered into the month of, um, of February this week. I declare there shall be testimonies this week. There shall be blessings this week. There shall be favor this week. I declare impossible things become possible this week. Obstacles become miracles. We are ushered into the month of February. And there shall be multiple testimonies. There shall be mega testimonies. Your mercy shall be upon us. Your favor shall be upon us. Your glory will rise upon us. Your name shall be glorified. We thank you for it. I bless you. I worship you. I honor you. Be thou exalted, O oh God. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody says amen. Amen. Praise Hallelujah. God. Once again, we want to thank God for today. And we bless God for those who join. If you are online and you join us by Zoom, can you just... Um,